Hey guys, it's the awesome chat, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, and uh, we're going to talk podcasting. We're going to talk about streaming radio today. I'm very excited for this. But first, go check out everything at awesomecast.net. Check us out, awesomecast on the Twitter, on the on the, on the Facebook, on the Facebook group. A lot of great conversations happen there as well. And uh, so, uh, check out all the past interviews we've been done on here uh, for the awesome chat, awesomecast.net, and all the uh, regular shows where we're just talking about all kinds of fun tech things uh, from people using this stuff. So my guest this week is uh brian crawford of the river's edge uh radio here and uh, actually a broadcast of broadcasting out of beautiful millville pa <laughs> <laughs> he's joining us here in studio spectacular millville studios oh yes yeah. uh yes i want to talk about millville in a little bit but first uh river's edge people it, you know this is something you know of course we've hooked up here in the last few weeks and we're doing some stuff obviously awesome cast is is uh as we're talking i think just premiered on on the network yes um and and uh y- 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 you got a cool thing going on but what is river's edge the river's edge is the only 24-hour local music radio station in pittsburgh period uh it's kind of awesome because it's a a chance for our listeners to be able to listen to new music they've never heard before and actually support their neighbors their friends and it's really astounding i find myself uh, with the songs stuck in my head the, these songs that i hear on our network and it's it's really really fascinating just to see the quality of music that's in pittsburgh i knew that there was good music because i've always went around and i've always gone to different local shows i'm a big i'm a big fan of local music and local performances but to hear these songs all the time you realize how great they are it, honestly i'd rather listen to that than the regular radio and it's uh it, it's cool it, it's it's 100 local and then we have local talk shows as well such as Awesome Cast, which now premieres Thursdays at 8 a.m. right after Funny Money. So uh, it, it's just really come together. We've only been up 24-7 since the summer. So things are moving very quickly for us. And it's uh, just Good. really a, a fun time. I love it. I love going to local shows. I love it, it's we, we did the Brewfest, for example, this past summer. The Millville Brewfest. And I we got paid to go drink beer and talk about beer. Like... Can it get any better? It's than the American that? dream. I, it's, yeah. it's absolutely paid it's to American drink beer. Dream. Yeah. So, um, the, the 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 I mean, you know, how many podcasts? You know, I will say that. You know, I mean, it, it, it's awesome. That's awesome. Um, there's some beer casts that haven't even gone to that. So, <laughs> yes, exactly. So. <laughs> but uh, that's awesome. So, so, so you're doing again, kind of a hybrid of you know, big, big, big emphasis on the streaming radio. Yes. And of course, you are on. I think you put yourself on SoundCloud. I think SoundCloud, and, iTunes, uh, Pod Addict. There's mm-hmm. all different ones you Pod can find. Pod Addict. Us on. I haven't yeah. heard about one. <laughs> that's that, that's the uh, the Google version of iTunes, or it's similar to that. It's, okay. it's one option you can use. Okay. I just it's just the one I use. So yeah. I'm sure I'm out of other ones depending on where the the stream is coming from Mm -hmm. but yeah we we broadcast we stream live 24 hours a day and uh, our shows all broadcast in the mornings and then later that evening we put them all on demand so you kind of have a a chance to get a head start on everyone else listen around uh, river talks at 6 a.m or our other programs are at 7 or 8 a.m and then uh, in the evening on your way home from work if you just really love our stuff and you want to hear it a second time or if you uh, missed it in the morning, if you didn't wake up in time, you have the opportunity to listen to it on demand as well. And it sounds like you're trying to make this like the thing that people tune their internet dial to in the morning, right? Like yes. on, on the commutes or something. Because I know you, uh, River Talk, I think I saw it was on at like six in the morning, yes, right? Six in the so, morning. so you, you that that's what you're going for for, for that part. And the rest is just the, the kind of chillax the rest of the day with some music, right? Exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a cool little thing because it's there's so much variety in the river's edge we play all genres but there's no covers it's all originally written music so if you're a fan if you're a fan of music in general it's really a great opportunity because you've got groups like like the neon swing experience for example they're a big band style of band and then you have claymore which is a heavy metal band all on the same channel so if you're somebody Mm -hmm. who has a diverse interest in music this is kind of a place where you can experience your uh, expose yourself to more variety in music and more different types of music and it's all local so it's, mm. these are all bands that you can 
listen to, and then you can go see them in person. And that's super awesome because I, I, I know um, we were just talking a little bit beforehand. I was, I was a small part of the music scene a few years ago here in the area and really kind of fell out of it with a lot of my other projects. But it's mm-hmm. good to see that that's thriving and there's a good place for this. Um, this seems to be kind of the time to do something like this because uh, I feel like uh, some of these some of these other services, some of the music services, uh, uh, we're, you know, we have Beats Radio was a thing that was premiered last year. So the big curation side of things, right? We got the guy from UK or whatever they hired, right? That's yeah. doing all. Uh, Lazlo? No, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the guy from Grand Theft Auto. I think. Uh, but but you know, they're getting these big DJs from all over the world to curate these things. It, it, do you think that's kind of important to say? You know, here's here's some stuff that we found that we think you would enjoy at this point as as kind of a you know the the the, the orchestrator of this, I guess. Well, Michael, nobody looks at local music, mm-hmm. and it's something that always bothers me. People tell me all the time. I tell them I, I have this 24-hour radio station. you got to check it out. And the first thing people tell me is, well, there's no good music these days. It doesn't exist. Well, it, it does exist. We just mm-hmm. had a, a music festival in the Strip District. We, we sponsored it. They yeah. had over 150 local bands performing, mm-hmm. and, and it's great music. The problem is, is you, you the... What's being put out there since shows like American Idol, and, and there are some great musicians that came out of there, but it's celebrity first, right. music second in the, in the large record company industry. That doesn't mean that there are artists on the ground working to, to put together this great music. And I think something like The River's Edge will give those individuals a chance to get their stuff out there, their message out there, their music where they may not have the opportunity otherwise because they are more worried about the creative aspect of writing music than they are about creating maybe an image or looking a certain way. It's more about the music and the art with them. And and I think the River's Edge gives them an outlet to stream somewhere 24-7 where you know you listen to traditional radio and you hear the exact same song every so many hours. And, uh, and and I think this give, kind of gives a gives people a new a new chance to to experience more music. We right now we only have in a twenty four hour cycle you'll only hear the same song twice, and we're actually moving to eliminate that because to me that's too many repeats. Mm-hmm. So you don't want that kind of effect where like oh here's Miley Cyrus again I heard it two hours ago. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. we're looking to ex- expose people to new music and uh, one of the cool things is. With the streaming service we use, Radio.co, you can actually see the name of the band and the name of the song. And we're actually, this is, has not been released yet, but we are in development stages of uh, putting together a section of the web page, which will just be bios for the actual musicians. So when you hear a song you like, you see a band that you like, you can mm-hmm. go to that bio page, find their information. If they sign up to the, with the service that we use, which we've notified them all on that, uh, to promote their shows. It'll actually sh- list their shows right at the bottom of their page, a link to their website, where to buy their merchandise. Nice. So that way, whenever you're listening to this music and you love it, then you can actually give back to those artists. Mm-hmm. And it, and it's kind of s- circular in that way. Uh, and again, uh, I feel like, again, not being in the scene for a while, but mm-hmm. it feels like there hasn't been a great place for a local artist since MySpace kind of went away. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, because that was the place we all had a MySpace page. It was really geared towards here's the music and everything. We got to build these communities around them and everything. And I don't feel like Facebook really serves it as well. You know, I, I don't I don't come across them, but it's really cool to have like a good. I've seen a lot of local initiatives for unsigned artists, mm-hmm. um, but they always become kind of disorganized, you know, and the quality isn't there. Now, obviously, you guys are, uh, you know, having a little bit of like, well, OK, is this just, you know, is this up to a certain quality? It, it, you have to decide, is this worth me putting on my station for everybody here in a 24-hour period and be stuck with that because it's a streaming, right? We're, we're, it's not Pandora that I can skip it, Exactly. Right? Yeah, um, not, not at this stage. So, yeah. so it's not, you know, you know, there's a little more, more, more um, agency to that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of uh, – we do listen to all, all of the music, and we're not going to judge based on, based on content or – or, or genre of music, uh, we do try to select. There's a certain, you know, certain few bands where maybe we would leave out a certain song because we're trying to get our station into different establishments, different bars and cafes and things like that. So we have to be mindful of that. 
But uh, but yeah, we we do. We listen to everything. There are sometimes uh, some bands, you know, they put something out there, and maybe we'll only pick one song out of right. the whole album right. because we want to keep up with that quality or we want to make sure it stays consistent. But uh, but yeah, no, I, and and I agree with you. MySpace since it left, I, Facebook does does a very good job for advertising. It's it's mm-hmm. a great tool for bands to get their shows out and their events and things like that. But you're right, it doesn't have the same musical element that that myspace did it's not music first no it's not and and, and granted and granted myspace went a little music first after timberlake or whoever bought it right yes but it's mm-hmm. still it's not the same man no no it's not <laughs> where's <laughs> no, my an, where's my animated star gif backgrounds man <laughs> yeah no because you're right yeah that and the, the crazy backgrounds <laughs> that would uh, just break would, your computer that would drive me nuts because i'm, a, I'm an ocd guy so every time somebody would have all the crazy backgrounds and looks on Facebook on uh, I'm sorry meet me I would I my mind would just spin trying to uh, process it all but but it was great for looking up bands because you're right you could just look up the band and they had the tracks right there you mm-hmm. were able to listen to it right it, it was it was yeah it was perfect I think they even had maybe a purchase mechanism like like not not like I remember it was mp3.com was a thing mm-hmm. that's where we got our first like few like band local band cds through right, right now a lot of local bands can get their music on spotify yeah see, but the it, problem with spotify is people are looking for specific music right. it's not something where they're going to be force-fed exactly. new music so they may go in and just listen to the same music over and over again because it's bands that they're exposed to they're they're looking for bands they already know mm-hmm. versus looking for bands that are new and it's not hard and again you're kind of in there amongst everything else um i know if you have your stuff in cd baby uh, you know, that they take care of it from there, basically. And mm-hmm. that gets you on all the major... You, you check a few boxes, say, yeah, please put me on here. Um, and you get a check for five bucks every couple of months, you know, yeah. or whatever the case may be. But, it, you know, again, it's so big, you know, if Taylor Swift, it's Taylor Swift complaining about what she's getting. You know, you know imagine what you small person, you know, oh, uh, sure. putting that thing out is. And is that worth... Uh, you know, any exposure, I think, is, is worthwhile when it comes to that. But again, I don't think it serves the new unsigned nearly as well as something like this, something local, something something good like this. Um, and there's no strings attached either. Right, That's one of right. the great things. A local band who decides to go with us, mm-hmm. there, there's like a little agreement that they sign and they are not restricted to us. They can have their music play anywhere. They can cancel with us at any time. There's no, you know, we're, we're not trying to do a music grab and take people's music. We're just trying to create an opportunity and it's mutually beneficial. It gets their name out there. It allows them to get exposure, like you said, but it also brings us great content. And, and really, I'm thrilled with the music that we have. So mm-hmm. uh, we're very fortunate that that these bands are willing to cooperate with us. Let's talk about the, uh, the, the the talk radio stuff that you're doing and the shows that you have on. Obviously, Awesomecast is a very uh, local-centric-minded, uh, for the most part, uh, tech show. Uh, and you know we all know what those philosophies are if you listen to those shows. Uh, but you uh, you have a pretty good uh, 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 stable here going on. Can you tell me a little bit about the shows? You mentioned a couple of him here briefly. Uh, but but you know what you know I, what is your kind of philosophy on staying? You know is it is are you trying to be hyper local to Pittsburgh or you know and, and and tell us about some of the people that are also on the network. Yes, we are pretty hyper local. It's funny, as much as the River's Edge is a 24-hour radio station, it actually started out as a podcast. The uh, The River's Edge podcast, which premiered February 9th last year, uh, that, that was the first episode. And that, that became what is now River Talk. And I would interview different musicians as part of my podcast, uh, different musicians in the, in the scene, different artists. I had uh, Matt Henderson was on one of the first shows. He did a play... Was it at 12 Piers Theater? It may have been at 12 Piers Theater, which is out in East Liberty. But we uh, di- did a lot of interviews with, with those types of people. And I was at a networking event, and we I ran into my business partner, and that's what started the whole music end of it, because she wanted to do a music station. I already had been interviewing musicians, so we just kind of joined forces. That's and, how the best uh, relationships happen. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, you know, you write into the party, you're like, you want to do your thing, I want to do a like this. What if we can do both things? Exactly. Yeah, and, 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 and kind of make both things happen in some kind of new, awesome joining. You know? Exactly, and yeah. that's exactly what happened. And, and it's been a great merger, because uh, my, my partner Sarah has a lot of business experience she's on the Milvo Borough Development Corporation her fiance Tom has a lot of technology experience so he's able to 
and or technology issues, and I have the on-air experience and some of the radio experience that I was able to bring to the table, so it's worked well. But the talk is really important to me because traditional radio ruined radio for me. Right. I got so sick of hearing the exact same song every every hour. I got sick of tuning into a radio station and being able to predict the next song that was coming up. So I got sick of it. I stopped listening to radio. I didn't listen to radio for years. The music radio. I then turned to talk radio, and that was after I left college the first time I was able to experience talk radio, and I fell in love with it, and I realized that that's what I wanted to do. So the talk is really important to me. So uh, the second show we brought on was called is called Funny Money, and it's Tom Henry and Matt Wolfarth. Tom Henry is a financial advisor. He's got uh, a lot of experience in finances, but both of the gentlemen are comedians. So Matt will ask the everyday question to Tom about the economy, and, and it's a, a really funny show, but it's extremely informational. And it was really kind of cool because I listened to this show every week, and I remember hearing Tom go on and on about China and how China is about to crash. Don't invest in anything. China's on the downspin. He said that weeks before China just had this big, massive economic uh, hit. So he, he really knows his stuff. But Tom and Matt actually broadcasted out of our old studio before Millville Studios. We uh, started the show in an attic in my closet. So Matt and Tom would come into my house, walk all the way through the house, upstairs into the attic, and sit in this closet, which was so hot in the, in the summer and so cold in the winter. Uh, one time I actually pa- almost passed out. I, I was getting loopy and woozy while I'm doing my show. Mm-hmm. And it was exhausting, so we were thrilled to move. That's, um, that's, uh, we, that sounds like our studio down here. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. But uh, then we brought in uh, Matt Geica from Geik's Got Game. Mm-hmm. Uh, that He hosts that show, and he's actually the Pirates beat writer for DK on PittsburghSports.com. And uh, that's, for those of you who are familiar with sports, you know DK on PittsburghSports.com. Dayon Kovakovich was a award-winning column writer for the Tribune Review and previ- before that the Post-Gazette quit the Tribune Review to start his own website, and within less than a year, he was able to hire an entire staff and actually poach people from the Tribune Review and pay them more money for his subscription website. So uh, really great information. Matt's actually in the press boxes at Pirate Games. He's been in the locker room at Steeler Games. He's all over. So uh, good info there. And then uh, just recently, we added Awesome Cast, which is uh, now rebroadcasting Thursday mornings after Funny Money. And... We just added Bold Nights Out, which is run from our friends at the Bold Pittsburgh blog and magazine, which I know they're f- uh, friendly with you guys yeah, as the, well. They're the ones that, that, that told us to come talk to you, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and that's awesome because they are everywhere. They know what's going on in the city, and that's what Bold Nights Out is. They tell you what to do, where to go, so that way you kind of have some idea before you go. Say, say you want to go to Grist House Brewing in Millville, and they talk about it on their show, then you know right there, uh, what what their experiences were, what they thought was good, and you kind of get a glimpse of of these places before you head out. Awesome, awesome. So, and, 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 and you also, like, you know, you know like me, I kind of started just doing this thing, right? Like yes. Like a while ago. But you, you mentioned, I think, briefly, uh, you actually have a background in broadcast, and, and again, you know, I mean, it's, it's not easy to get a broadcast job. First of all, yes. um, as we know, you know the, the few friends that we have that are in you know TV and radio, it's 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 a pretty flooded field. There's not a lot of opportunities there on mainstream. That sure, we're not really crazy about, anyways, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you see, uh, you know, uh, so you're you seeing the you're seeing the opportunity here in what's happening on the internet podcast slash uh, the streaming radio thing, then, right? I do actually. I wish I knew the country offhand, but there's a country in Europe that actually has disbanded the FM dial. They're pushing people to internet radio because everybody has Bluetooth in their cars. So uh, my, I don't necessarily want to see traditional radio go away. There's a lot of great people who work in radio, but I would like to see America progress to the point where internet radio is an option and people are going to their TuneIn radio app, which you can find us on, or iHeartRadio or any of the other outlets out there. And stream live uh, but first we got to get to a point where we can afford it because right, right now the uh, the data charges oh are obviously crazy yeah yeah so i'm hoping that that will alleviate and people will start to listen to more online radio because there's so mm-hmm. much out there like you said i uh 
I've picked up different internet radio stations over the last couple years that I listen to on a semi-regular basis because they're, uh, you know, good stuff, stuff I'm not going to hear everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, and like you said with the podcasts, there's a lot of great content out there. I got my list of podcasts that I listen to at work, and uh, and it's great. I And it's funny, it's something that's I'm actually new to. I have more of a radio background than a, a podcasting background. And you don't have to worry about the FCC and all that's that true. stuff. So there's a, it's... It, it's it's pirate radio. It's amazing. It is. Uh, and, and I had a hard time adjusting to that because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on traditional radio for a couple of years. So I was used to staying within those boundaries of the FCC. So I kind of had to force myself to be a little looser with my words because that seems to be what people want on the Internet. They want to get away from the mm -hmm. regulation and uh, more towards a, towards a real conversation. It is interesting because then that's become, um, you know, whether we call them podcasts, we just call them online radio, digital media, whatever you want to. Um, it, it, it feels like, you know, now, whereas it was just like guys like me with a PC mic saying, I want to do a podcast and finding, yes. a, finding a small audience there. Now, of course, we have public radio people that know how to audio engineer and and tell more interesting and well edited stories and audio rather than just you know a conversation like like i like to have um so now the art form is kind of come to it you know that you would usually hear on public radio um and 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 seeing and everybody's trying to figure out that business model right yeah uh, and, and and it's 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 a wide thing it's not just a guy with a microphone that talks about something for an hour right now it's that and a 10 minute comedy podcast and and this show over here to talk about this and businesses trying to connect here uh, a little easier with 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 the with the format as well i mean it's it, it is a little bit of everything going on yeah no you're right and it's it's kind of interesting to see i started the river's edge because i was out of wcal and i was kind of disgruntled and i said screw it because i wasn't making any money there i was doing it as a volunteer i said instead of driving to california pennsylvania once a week mm. i'll start my own studio and at worst i'll come out even i won't lose any money so i i decided to go that route and uh through people i've met i, I actually know somebody and i'm not going to list any names but he's in traditional radio he's aggravated he's talked about going to online radio so sometimes right. people just want that freedom that we talked about and they're in traditional radio they've got the creative background they have the ability to put together a good product but they're being shackled by right. not only the FCC, but by their employer as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I know sometimes if you get a sponsorship agreement, they will try to tell you, well, you can't say this about that person, you can't say this about that, and that really affects the integrity of your show and your commentary as well. Right, right. Or or the, these fan models like Patreon. Like, like I've, I've seen people leave... Uh, traditional publications that where they're doing you know a, a news tech news show and they go and they're funded on Patreon completely and it's it, it, it's one of their jobs at that point. Yeah, that's so awesome. So I, I did a quick search and according to an article in uh, a April of last year, uh, it looks like Norway is facing out the FM radio Norway, by okay. 2017. By 2017, so yes. So that's amazing. Yeah, way to go, Norway. But also Norway, I think, has some pretty crazy internet. Uh, because I think a podcast I was listening to, uh, a guy moved from France to Norway, and he's like, yeah, it's it's pretty Well, the awesome United States there. in many ways is like a third world nation. I know. When it yeah. comes to internet, that's uh, one of the areas. You've got a lot of people who are still using dial-up right. across the country, and really that's it's inexcusable in a, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a, you mm -hmm. know, for a, a country like the United States, which is supposed to be one of the world leaders, where you have people who live here that are... Right. In the Stone Ages. A lot of underserved, uh, definitely rural communities, um, you know, like not even cell service sometimes still, although it's, it's a lot more vast than it was five years ago. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the relatives and in-laws are in those areas. Sure. Like, mm -hmm. uh, my, you know, my dad got a, got a, uh, you know, those spiffy TVs for Christmas with the smart, you know, smart TVs. Oh, yeah. And I'm looking at all the icons on there. I was like, he has satellite internet. And I'm like, you know, you're not using any of that stuff. <laughs> you know, because he has like a, he has a data cap per day. Yeah, you know, it's wow. just like no, no, you're not doing that, buddy. It's not going to work. Um, That's crazy. So not, not, you know, not to mention the speed probably isn't up to snuff, and he's still paying the probably like twice what I'm paying. Yeah, here it's insane. In the city is 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 crazy. Um, so, uh, so, so you've been around. You're having a, a year party coming yes. up here. Yes. Uh, and it looks like you got a heck of a shindig going on here. Yes. Uh, and 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 it, one of uh, so I visited the space. One, I'm fascinated by the space you guys are in. Yes, um, Millville Studios. And, and it was Millville Studios, which is part of New Sun Rising up there, right? It is not actually. Oh no, it's not. Yeah, I, 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 Sun, I saw a sign hanging. That was yeah, a New Sun Rising <laughs> is a temporary uh, 
is a, a temporary renter okay. of the space. They're actually, if you look next to Millville Studios, there's that big building under construction mm-hmm. to the exact right of it. If you're on North Avenue, Pamela's is on your left of the studio. This building is on the right. That's where they're moving. They're going to be upstairs. Hmm. That building is going to be a food hub for the area because Millville is actually a food desert. There's nowhere to buy local f- or any kind of food in yeah. Millville. You have to actually get a shaler. To get to a grocery store. I didn't so, even think about it. Yeah, I've never seen a grocery store there. Yeah, so yeah. that's what that's going to be. It's going to be local food, local produce, and things like that. That's going to the right of the studio. So they reached, uh, I guess, a, a halt in construction for a while. So they're way behind. Yeah. So New Sun Rising needed to open up. So they rented a space in Millville Studios, and mm-hmm. uh, that's why they're there. And they're a great group. I, I know they're they're involved in a lot of lot of uh, uh, groups and projects and. Arts and and, and nonprofits. Um, yeah, but, they're uh, they're good guys. Yeah, they're awesome. They're awesome. But uh, that's awesome. But, it, but the space you were telling me is an old furniture store. Of course, yes. now it's kind of this art center. Yes. Uh, and, and and I'm looking forward to see uh, what a party is like uh, uh, in that place uh, uh, filled with some people doing some live broadcast. Can you tell us a little bit what you guys have coming up and plan for it? Yeah, it's going to be great. It's four hours. The party is from two to six p.m. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be four musicians and four podcast recordings so uh two of the musicians are or two of the music wax are banned so we're going to start off with my show river talk at 2 p.m and then we're gonna we've got uh as far as podcasts go we have the uh, jag off podcast from the pittsburgh podcast network from my understanding they were just here recording yep, so they'll just be, last night <laughs> yeah they'll be they'll be there on the 13th and uh, we also have Dyke scott game and funny money all recording and as far as bands go we have strange monsters which is uh Dawn Strange's band, There You Are, Paul Caustic, and Spencer Allen Patrick. And uh, all of the bands that you will hear, they all are streaming at the River's Edge at riversedgepgh.com and the River's Edge on TuneIn Radio. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it, it's four hours, eight acts. So it's going to be one right after another. So there's going to be very little downtime. And it's a cool little stage in the very back of the building that we have set up. And what's awesome is... Millville Studios, it, it's not just an art gallery, it's an art studio, so the artists are actually building the, these works of art, so it's kind of cool. When you go in there to the party, you will see art that is half-made a lot of times because mm-hmm. it's all in the process, and if you come back and it's open, normal business hours usually due to New Sun Rising being in there, you can actually see the art progressing over time, which is one of the benefits I have having our studio in the back of the nice. building is where I'm able to walk in and see all of this great artwork all the time. That's great. That's great. So that's, uh, again, that's uh, that's February 13th, 3 to 6 p.m., Millville Studios. Uh, go down there. It, it, it's great to see um, this kind of... We had Frank Mergy, you, you know, oh, uh, yeah. Pittsburgh Good Podcast for Network, He's- of course, uh, on here a, a few months ago, talking about we need to get the podcast together. We need everybody to work together. We need to make this awesome big thing and put Pittsburgh on the map with this stuff. And I love seeing something like this happening, where where there are a lot of lot of people involved. Uh, uh, pleasure to be a part of it, and uh, and I think it's a really really cool thing. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what's the future of, of Rivers Edge? As much as you can talk about, I don't know where you're at with plans and announcements sure. or anything, well, but well, but like what what what's the pipe dream here? Where do you want to go with this? Well, first I I do want to take a step back to your your last comment about sure. podcasts working together. Stay tuned to RiversEdgePGH.com. This summer, there's a new project. I don't want to leak anything yet, but we are going to be bringing all of the podcasting agencies together for a, uh, a big project that's going to occur in Millville, so stay tuned for that. The future of the River's Edge. Well, uh, like I said, we are going, looking to be completely repeat-free. Uh, eventually, we want to create options for people. We want to have like like a metal station, for example, where you'd be nice. able to just listen to your metal music, and maybe that way we could add in some of those songs that we had to take out of the the overall stream uh so we we definitely we want to expand we want to want to expand into multiple stations where people can experience different genres and and kind of tune in on, on what they like but still have that variety for for people who want it and uh, we're also hoping to put together more musical performances over the years we're hoping to bring more music to millville and try to bring people into the community to see musical acts and uh I don't know if I want to release some of the, the, the big plan we have for next year, but uh, there are some big things in the works for, for the River's Edge. So uh, right now, we, we just want to keep getting involved in these music festivals. We have we were involved in, God, four music festivals in our first year. That's we awesome. Were, yeah, involved in the Raise Your Voice and Manessin, Heavy Metal Manessin, 
Deutsche Town Music Festival, and then uh, most recently we were involved in the Strip District Music Festival. So uh, we're hoping to get more involved with that, and we're hoping to, to put out the exposure. We, we hope that you can go to your local brewery and hear the, the River's Edge playing in the background or go to the local coffee shop, and, and that's kind of our challenge to businesses is you, you claim to be a Pittsburgh business. You claim to be all about Pittsburgh. Well, why are you playing music from overseas or wherever? Why, why aren't you playing music from local mm-hmm. artists here in Pittsburgh because the quality is there. And I think I think we talked about this a little bit. Um, when you have all the local and the way that you program this, no ASCAP. Yeah. I know are very, very brutal, especially to coffee shops. I've talked yeah. to a couple owners about that. And it's really cool to say, yeah, we don't really need you. Yeah, radio yeah, industry exactly. uh, we, we found industry. a way around it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so and, they're probably and, listening and, and looking for a way to sue me now <laughs> the, oh no no the, yeah they'll just do what they did to napster <laughs> yeah <laughs> if we get too big uh but hey that'll be a good problem to have right exactly uh, if you get that big enough that they can take notice uh so uh, that'd be awesome uh so no so there you go if you're a business owner and you want a little more than just that Pandora playing in the background, you know, keep it local, keep it awesome. I think, I think it's a really cool thing. Uh, so awesome. Uh, so check it out. Rivers edge, uh, pgh.com. I, if you may have heard me, I probably accidentally called it rivers life. Cause I remember I interviewed those people <laughs> a few years ago that, that, that did all the redo of the fountain and everything downtown. So I'm trying to correct that. I'm getting better with it on the show. I wrote it on my notes real big. There we go. So I don't screw it up anymore. <laughs> uh, but it's awesome to be part of it. Check it out. It's a really cool thing happening in Pittsburgh and you don't have to be in Pittsburgh to check it out. Uh, so please, please do that. And thank you so much for carrying us. And, uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, check it out. Uh, that and awesomecast.net. Check out the other interviews uh talk to us about uh, the interviews that we've had uh questions for anybody we've announced coming up in the future is there anybody awesome in pittsburgh you think we should be talking to on the show let us know over there or on twitter at awesomecast or on the facebook page or facebook group as well or awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and uh subscribe to this and all the shows around there as well uh so thank you to our awesome guests ryan and uh you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.